Hello guys, in this video I want to continue the new monthly tradition of reviewing the tweets from the past months, the best ones, the most popular ones, the most liked ones with Laravel and PHP tips from myself and Laravel community on Twitter. So in this video, tweets from July, I counted 11, but maybe there will be more. Let's go without further ado. The first one comes from Jason Beggs, and he suggests a middleware to replace something in your path in the route in the query string, like, for example, redirect all requests with uppercase letter to lowercase equivalents. So you can create a custom middleware replacing the path and query string with str to lower, and then redirect to that new string, like, for example, JSON's example is location Atlanta with uppercase A, and it would auto redirect with lowercase A. So this is the tip number one. The next tip comes from myself. I'm tweeting Laravel docs like tweet by tweet, piece by piece that I find, and this one got pretty popular with 84 likes, so I'm repeating it here on YouTube. Did you know that you can set notifications not just with user notify with specific user in your database, but you can send notifications to any email or any Slack channel channel or any SMS, phone number if it is configured in your system without that user being in your database. This is called on-demand notifications. Tip number three comes from Andrew, and this is two-in-one tips about carbon. So in the first tip, Andrew wanted to round to the nearest 30 minutes, and this was his solution. Let me zoom that in. Round timestamp with mathematical calculation. And this snippet works well, but then a day after that, Andrew tweeted another thing. He had no idea that the carbon method existed, the method called round round minute. And it was suggested by non-Korean driver here on Twitter. So you can try it out in your project and see what would be the results with different parameters of round minute. The next tip comes from Osama and I do recommend to follow him on Twitter. His tips are really good and he's pretty constant with them on Twitter. So did you know I didn't, for example, this was news to me because I haven't really used it actively, that every request in Laravel has its own unique so-called fingerprint. So random long string built using the domain, URL method and IP address. So pretty unique thing. So if you need to have some kind of identifier for the request, for example, for caching, fingerprint is a good example. The next tip comes from myself. I'm picking my own personal tweets that got popular. So it's a reminder about performance that you shouldn't load all the data if you need just some of the data from the database. For example, if you need product with orders, but just the sum of the orders count or order price, something like that, this piece of code would still load all the orders table, although you need just summarizing numbers. So instead of doing this, you should do with count or with sum or whatever with aggregate function to load only the data that you need. And this is the difference between non-optimized and optimized RAM and seconds or milliseconds in the example of, from what I remember, 100K orders in the database. And the emphasis here is not that much about the time that it takes, but also about memory because your server may run out of memory and stop loading all your project at all. So this is the example 100 max for one user locally, but imagine 10 simultaneous user or 100 users and your server would be taken down pretty quickly. The next tip is kind of funny, but sweet and elegant comes from Newton Job. Did you know that you can create a notification for birthday wish, for example? This is an artisan command that you would execute with PHP artisan notify. Inside, you send the notification with happy birthday notification class, and you schedule that yearly on 21st of July, which was exactly the date of when that tweet was posted. So I guess it was his own celebration for his own birthday. Sweet. The next tip is a bit untypical. It comes from Arvid Kahl, who is not a Laravel developer. He is an active entrepreneur. I've been following him for many years. And recently his latest startup is on Laravel and he's building it himself. 
but he's not experienced enough. He's okay, as he would say, but he's using AI extensively to sometimes generate the code, sometimes collaborate. And the latest example was pretty fascinating with Anthropic AI and Claude. Look at the example. Actually, I'm not sure if I can zoom it in enough. Probably not, but I will read the prompt. Let's create a Laravel class that acts like internal queue, where it takes an item with an ID and priority and then allows consumer to fetch a new item, prioritizing high priority items over low priority ones. It's a first in first out queue and it's very performant. And basically what AI generated is on the right side, class priority queue with the methods inside and algorithm implemented exactly as the prompt suggested. So this is just one example and I will link the tweet in the description below. But the message is this, if you haven't tried AI to generate some parts of your code, then you are likely missing out. Of course, it's a separate job to make the prompts correct to avoid silly mistakes and incorrect things, but the current generation of AI code generators seems to be significantly powerful than the first generations of ChatGPT. So just try AI tools, whatever tools you prefer in your projects and see for yourself. Okay, we have four tips left on my list and here's the next one again from Osama, abbreviate numbers. This is a pretty quick one, not much to comment. This came from Laravel 10 from what I remember, number class and one of the methods is abbreviate which returns 1k something k or 1.23 m4 million. Very useful on the dashboards where you don't have much space and you need to abbreviate the numbers. The next tip is pretty long, comes from Aniket, resource file for polymorphic relationship, loading the likable resource with conditions. So you can use eloquent API resource inside of another API resource, which is exactly what is happening here. But resource name class is automatically built by class, class base name, and prefix like app HTTP resources and suffix resource. And this example is about eloquent API resources. But the idea here is that you can build and generate the full class name of any Laravel class with prefixes and suffixes and then create the class instance with whatever parameter you want. The next tip comes from Dan Matthews and it's about generating a string, a certain key for use with the cache. But the thing is that you can pass string or array. So if it's an array, it would be imploded into one string and then would return MD5 if it's longer than 200. And then this is the usage cache get and this is how the key for the cache is generated team ID one for example then separator symbol this one then another separator symbol and then the key itself and the final tip from this video comes from Laravel dev which will be pretty quick about optimization and this is not about Laravel this is more about PHP if you have if statement with a few conditions start with the fastest and finished with the slowest one probably in reality in most cases it's fastest is local if condition and slowest would be any query to the database or any external third party provider or something like that. Because if any of the fastest method fails, then the Laravel or PHP interpreter wouldn't even run the third condition because the logic is this, whatever the first fails, then everything fails and we don't even check those that come afterward. So yeah, these are the Laravel and PHP tips from July. What did you like the most? Anything new that you have learned? Share in the comments below. And I will continue this monthly tradition. So in the first days of September, expect a video about August tweets. And of course, follow me on Twitter at Povilus Corp if you want to get those tips and tweets faster than in one month time. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.